right, well, first clue is we're going to be in drop D, so let me get my tuner and fine tune this bad boy. So drop D is just taking the standard tuning E, A, D, G, B, E, and I'm going to back up a little bit, and uh, lowering the bottom string down a whole step. So you go from E down to D, loosen the string. So normally it would be here, but I'm lowering it down to D. So it would be the same as... Oh, hey, Sam. Wow, that's weird. The chat started at the bottom there. Um, you know what? I need to do the post the Discord link. Let me do that. Copy. Paste. <laughs> the heart of Big Ten country. Hilarious. Exactly. Morning. Sorry, I'm running late. Man, I just had a hard time getting to this. Uh, uh, I I start actually it was three different songs this morning. I I kept trying to decide what I was going to teach today, and I'm like still like I'm, I I couldn't get all the everything done that I wanted to get done. So like the 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 chords on all one page. Um, I didn't get that. I didn't get around to doing that. That's actually really hard to do. Holly, you probably know because um, you have to, um, you know, size each individual chord diagram and, and they're not uniform and it just looks funny. And I just, I couldn't get around to that. So um, I did a little chord chart on it. I think it's right. We'll see. Uh, the first clue, like I said, uh, is that we're in uh, drop D. Let's do this, go like that. So we're consequently most likely going to be in the key of D. Mung beat Mung, good to see you. So I drop D is just standard tuning, but you take the bottom string down a whole step. So it's D, then A, and then D again, and then G. And some of the chords we're going to use are D. We're going to use a G chord, which I play like this. You could also play like, like that if you wanted to, or like this. Or in other words, I'm, I'm deadening the A string with my third finger. You can do that. But I, if you put your pinky here on the fifth fret of the A string, you get double Ds here. Dennis, what's going on? Hey, Joseph. Good morning. Yeah, Bruce is, oh, he's listening in. Okay, hey, Bruce, good to, good to not see you, but good, good to know you're listening in. Yeah, do not text and drive, Bruce. He's driving to his brother's funeral in, I believe it was San Antonio. So our thoughts and our prayers are with him in his, and pray that the Lord gives uh, Bruce traveling mercies, keeps him awake on the road. See, Florida to Texas, that's a, it could be a long drive. I mean, you're, you're not going to do that in one day, I don't think. I, part, I think you're not quite in the panhandle either. If you were maybe on the panhandle, you go across, what, what's that? There's a little bit of Georgia there, a little bit of Alabama there, and a little bit of Mississippi, and then you got to go through Louisiana, and then it's Texas, and it's like, Texas is massive, but I... I I always think like the cities are further apart from each other than they are, and they are far apart when you drive them, but, but they're kind of like Houston and then there's Dallas and Fort Worth is right next to Dallas. And then there's Austin and San Antonio. I think San Antonio is the fifth largest city in the country. Doesn't have an NFL team. What's wrong with that? Um, so yeah, so drop D tuning. I'm trying to think if I go back over the previous can't read these oh yeah we did ACDC we did Neil Young we did Rolling Stones we did Plain White Tees the Beatles again right Day Tripper uh, Jack and Diane that's a really popular one I mean it's not really grown much now 
but it had 2,900 views, which is a lot for these. Um, so, oh, cream, that's right. Sister Golden Hair America. I forgot I did that one. Uh, what was this one? What was song? Was mystery song number 12. I could do it this way, too. Sunshine, Sister Golden Hair. Oh, you too. Okay. Oasis. Um, Blue Oyster Cult. Fleetwood Mac. R.E.M. Uh, is there anybody out there? Oh, that's a, a Pink Floyd. That's the only one I got a, a copyright strike on, I think. Or there was another one. Rebel Rebel, uh, David Bowie. Cat Eagles, Police. Beatles again. It was the first time we did Beatles. Zeppelin and Tom Petty. Okay, so this is a big clue. This is the first time we're doing a female artist. Um, no reason except so many guitar songs are guy bands. Um, and we tend to, I tend to gravitate towards bands. But we've got a couple, you know, Neil Young is in there. But, uh, just got too many things going on here. Um, let's see. And we're in drop D. Any any guesses? Probably no guesses yet. I mean, you can always guess the artist first. And then I'll tell you the era here in a second. But um, uh, there's an A chord. It's going to be A sus, A, uh, E minor. And so the way you play E minor with drop D, E minor is just like take an A chord and go all the way to the top of the fretboard. So you're going to be, instead of being on the fourth, fifth, and, I'm sorry, fourth, third, and second string, you're going to be on the sixth, fifth, and fourth string. And E minor seven would just be those two. So it'd be like taking an E minor chord and going up one string each. And then that adds our, that D string in there. because it's a, So... Hundred and ten, yikes! Yeah, I think we're getting ninety-five today. Summer is here. Yikes! Let me just check my tune again. Felt weird. Yeah, I think. Phoenix, there people in Phoenix are totally used to the heat. My my cousin was here uh, last week, and she lives in Phoenix. And um, yeah, they just in the summer they just don't go outside. They they do all indoor things. They go to movies. I said, do you mall walk? And she goes, well, I'm not that old yet. <laughs> but you know that would be something you would do. Um, uh, what was the oh oh you know I didn't know this uh, in I think it's in it's in Phoenix or Scottsdale, but the the Musical Instrument Museum. So I'm, I'm already kind of looking at planning a trip to do that. Might be kind of fun. Uh, because I always looking to learn about new instruments, particularly from weird countries. So drop D, female artist. Um, let's see. Solo artist, so not a female band, which would be pretty rare. Not many of those. The Bangles. Um, let's see. What other clues can I give you? Well, I've been giving you some of the chords, but that's not really fair. Um, and we're in D, but we're going to be, we're also going to be, Sam, we're going to be D adjacent. We're going to, uh, we're going to have a C chord in here. Um, we're actually going to have a, a C uh, over D chord, okay, in the song. Um, and uh, so I've done diagrams for these, uh, all, but I haven't put them in, into one document. So it's like going to be a thing where I, I'm just going to show you the chords here. If I feel like I need a, a diagram, I'll drag them all over into um, the Discord. So you can go ahead and download all those and kind of create your own doc. Or Holly, I don't know. I don't, I'm not in post. I don't want to assume. But um, if somebody wants to put them all in one document so you can have them kind of all on one page, that's not a bad idea. But you can do that yourself easy enough. I just, I, I like to group them in verse, chorus, and we pretty much just have an intro, verse, chorus kind of thing going on. And then there's kind of an outro chord progression. Um, 
yeah, hit the like button if you think of it, if you like it. <laughs> There's not much to like yet. Oh, man, and it's tough. I, it's just, I've been so busy, and it was I, – and I had to work late last night. I was working – oh, look, we got a spider. Little baby spider. Hope that doesn't mean there's a whole bunch of spiders somewhere. <laughs> Gonna have to write another spider song. He landed on my guitar though. Just a little teeny white spider. Oh, there he is right there. Where did he go down there? Ah, I think I killed him, but I'm not sure. But he was hanging by a thread. Or maybe he committed suicide off of my headstock. <laughs> There's a, there's a joke in there somewhere, or a song. Okay, so, all right. Well, um, this is a song is from the 70s, all right? Um, I don't know that I need this, but I do need my, I do need to get over here and go to live stream stuff, create a folder. Do I create a folder for these? I don't. I should, but I don't. I'm going to create a folder. So I'm going to. Um, Solar, it's 70s. Um, I taught this one a lot, uh, but I taught it wrong, of course. Uh, but when I was, you know, 18 years old is when I started teaching guitar lessons. And I don't even think I knew it was drop D. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, and I even got the first, I got the second chord wrong. The first chord, I, well, even the first chord I got wrong because I, I wasn't in drop D. Um, so, let's see. I need downloads, and there's a bunch of stuff here. All right, I'm going to grab all of this and put it in there. And then I'm going to go to view mode like this so that I can see everything and drag it in as I need it. Okay, so like I said, a D chord, I don't need this. Okay, um, where are you all? Oh, there you are. Hey, Joseph, thanks for buying me coffee. And uh, we definitely have, uh, the wedding's coming up. So it, all of, <laughs> aside from Joseph's coin, everything else goes to the wedding <laughs> fund. We're getting there. We're getting there, chipping away at it. I do have, um, I think I have a couple videos on drop D tuning. Um, great thing about drop D tuning, we really won't apply here, is that you can, you can make power chords real easy with one finger. You can go over the top. Um, and, and when you're making the G chord, so let's go over some of these shapes that we're going to use anyway, because I think it's <laughs> sitting at 13 like Just sitting there. Um, okay, so... He, it's going to look a little funny when you first see this because you're going to be like, wait, why is the oh, mic not? Why is, you know, it's... okay, so uh, that's a D chord, all six strings. So make a D chord and strum all six strings. Okay. Now, as soon as I play the second chord of the song, you're probably, many of you will know it. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the second chord. We'll put it over here on my other side here, okay? And it's a C. Where's the little tab? I'm trying to make it small, but I can't. Oh, there it is. Okay. And let's make it relatively the same size. Close. All right. But if I separate them far enough, you can't tell the difference. Okay. So this is like. This is a musical clue, cue. This is like a clue. This is like when you're playing the game, uh, name that tune. Hey, from France. I love France. Been there a couple times. Had wonderful times. Love, love the, I was in Paris and I love the people. <laughs> people outside of Paris called Par Parisians pigs or something like that. But, <laughs> but uh, I always had, I, I always made an effort. To speak, I, I, they would know. I, I'd try my best, Bolgia, you know, and they go, oh, how, am, how may I help you? They immediately knew I, are you from Los Angeles? You know, they immediately knew I wasn't from uh, France. So, you know, but they appreciate the effort. If you walk in and say, how much is that? They'll say, pardon? Parlez-vous français? But if, 
if you go in, if you go in there and say uh, you know whatever bonjour you know they immediately know and so they 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 talk to you in English but if you if you don't even try they'll pretend not to know it okay so play that chord okay so that chord the C over D it's cool it's like Really what I'm doing is I'm sliding an A shape. If you imagine the top three strings of an A chord, this would be B flat, this would be B, and here's C. All right? Now you might not know it from that because, again, I taught this song wrong for years. I thought it was something else. And it, it's it, when I listen to it today, today is when I did this because I, I had two other songs I was going to, and I'm not going to say what they're because I still may do them. Uh, they're on my list, but one is pretty current. And so I, a lot of you uh, might not know it. And and I was trying, I said, uh, you know what, let me try. Oh, and then I, oh, I knew what happened. I was starting to work on it, and I accidentally wrote the name of another song. And I went, oh, that would be a good one. So I started working on that one, and I realized, oh, shoot, that's harder than I thought. That's not, I can't get that done. And I had about a half an hour to do this, to prep this. So Stephen Holt, what's going on? San Antonio, you're burning up there. <laughs> I know, I just heard. Oh, you met Smiley Face. <laughs> Not sappy. Hey, greetings from San Antonio. Sad face. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I, I get it. You're watching me. That deserves a sad face. So, <laughs> so anyway. Um, no, we don't know the song yet, Timothy. Still working on it. Stairway to Heavenly. No. <laughs> yeah. That is a chord in it, though, right? That's true, uh, but they're not in drop D. Well, I'm in drop D, so I'm gonna add, I'm gonna put that in here. I'm gonna add a little text. Uh, all right, yo. All right. So if you're wondering, like, why is the sound, this doesn't sound right on my guitar. So drop D, we're just, just take the E string on the bottom. And, little Martha would be great. I think that's just, little Martha, just the picking I think would be a little difficult. And the version I know of it, let's see, I know it in, what do I know it in? Do, do I know little Martha? No, what's the one I know? Uh, and I can't even remember now, but it's an open D, I think. All six strings, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's really more of a polychord, okay, and what's that mean? Well, a, a polychord means that you have two chords on top of each other. Um, it's kind of like a C over a D5. A C over D, a pure, purely C would be like a C triad. You could do it like this, right? So the chord's not giving it away, I, I can tell, So, but the rhythm will. Um, so let me, let me, so here's the uh, C over D, like here's a C triad, like I'm playing the top three strings of a C chord with a D string. But because we're an open D, I can hit all strings. Uh, but it's not, it's not that. Easy. Does that give it away at all? Johnny Mitchell, oh, you're just guessing ch chick singers now, Holly. <laughs> you can't do that. That's not an educated guess. <laughs> she just Wikipedia list of female singers. <laughs> She's a great songwriter. I think she wrote this song. Oh, you're in Houston. Oh, Timothy's in Houston. Oh. Yeah. So this, like I said, would totally be a... Um, Kind of a polychord, but don't worry about it. C over D is fine. We're just, I just need to name it to teach it to you. I don't need to, we're not taking a test. <laughs> he needs to be dealt with. Dad joke. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's the intro. It's a really short intro. It's, it's almost like a modern intro, like of a current pop song, because pop song intros are about three seconds long on average. Whereas in the 80s, they were 23 seconds long. Um, and this is in the seventies. So here we go. Ready? You're going to know this. I think some of you are, some of you are not going to know this because you're not old enough. 
So. All right. <laughs> Any, and, oh, Timothy, you're in Chicago. Sorry. You have a daughter working in Houston. Okay. Chicago's probably pretty warm, too. Any guesses on that? Now, I know it takes about 30 seconds for you all to start guessing, but... Yes, that's exactly right. In fact, the outro is not C over D, it goes to E minor. Yeah, so that's how it ends. And I did write out the E minor. It's just, you could also think of it kind of a C major 7 over a D, but really not. Because we don't have a C in there. So it's just an E minor. It's a great, it's a great sound though. So, let me, uh, this song is, uh, uh, let's see, here we got, I'll write it in here, it's Anticipation by Carly Simon. Do I usually write the name of the song? Anticipation, Carly Simon, it's just spelled like that. That's how we have a friend named Carly, daughter, daughter of a friend. I don't, I don't know how she spells her name. It may be that way. It may even be a name for her. She's, um, our friend is, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, Courtney Cox's sister, Dottie. Never met Courtney, but Dottie, we used to see all the time down in Laguna Beach. Okay, so let me, I've got the, don't really need this anymore, I don't think. Remove. You know a D chord. So just, but again, we're in, this one I'll keep for now. Okay, but I'm going to make it a little smaller. Um, I'm going to drag the chord chart over, all right? I've already kind of got the chord chart pieced together here. Let me click on it. Okay. So I'm just going to go over the chords. They're pretty, pretty pretty easy. Did I? Oh, G over A. First two. Oh, yeah, I guess, okay. Yeah, so the G over A, I'll show you. The G over A is super easy. <laughs> so um, I'm just looking at the Like I said, I just did this at 8.30. I was like, what am I going to teach? And I, I, at eight, I, you know, I was like, still like, oh, I thought I had, I thought I knew I was going to do it at eight. I changed, I went, nope, I'm going to start, and I started something different at eight fifteen, and then I went, nope. I got far enough into that one and realized, yeah, that's not going to be, I can't finish that music. It's just difficult because I've just been so stinking busy, and I'm just today is completely slammed, so it's uh. So it's it's uh it's just been tough for me to um to to get to this. So okay, uh yeah, let me let me drag, I'll just drag all of those graphics right now into the Discord, okay? Um where's Discord? Here you are. Thanks, Holly. Sorry about this, people. It's gonna be a lot of files. Um you know if I may even I may even be able to go back and delete um, all of these screen grabs. Let's see, less than PDFs. Okay, that's where I drag it to. Um, I may be able to go back and delete all these once Holly does it. But I'm just going to drag everything I have here in there, and then too many uploads. Okay, I get it. You can only do ten at a time. <laughs> okay, I'll do six and six. Here about that. Okay. Hit return, and it won't, shouldn't take too long for those to upload. They're not big files. 
they're just screen grabs. Okay, so if you want, you can go ahead and start seeing some of these shapes. But uh, as as I as we if you know if I feel like I need to drag one over, I'll do it. Okay, but and basically, I don't know the words offhand, but I'm I'll I'll sing at the song. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get my windows in order here. Okay, so um, it just does that. It just now I taught it like. You know, a simplified version would be to go to D sus or you can even slide down to your third finger. That would be also C over uh, C over D. Uh, but I hear that G, so you could it could be that. I think I hear that E in there though. So if I did this. See, I'm playing open, 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 one, three. That's kind of like a C5 over D5. <laughs> okay, Sam? That's a polychord. That's a, a power chord polychord. That's a power polychord. <laughs> okay? It's just roots and fifths. That's what a power chord is. That's why I love drop D. sounds so sinister so once we get going um, and again I didn't I was I started out and the other thing that kind of threw me was I go oh I should do a chart for the rhythms and then I, I got into that and realized I don't have time to do a chart a, like a, a finale chart of the rhythm so I just deleted I, I got like four or five bars into the song and I went yeah this is gonna take forever <laughs> so I just uh... Basically, what the intro is okay now. So, if you want to, let's get the rhythm down first D, D sus, and it's a little tricky because what's happening is one, two, three, four, four, so there's a lot of D2 in there. Uh, she goes to D2 a lot. I'm not sure if it's her playing guitar. Uh, update the video title. Oh, thanks, Holly. All right. Bossy, bossy, bossy. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, you know, I, I could do the hashtags, too. The hashtags are what drive so much of the traffic to the, these videos, and I just forget to change the hashtag. Uh, Carly, I'll do the artist first this time. Simon. And... You know, and I always wonder, like, when I went to look for this on YouTube, the song, just to kind of refresh my memory and then realize how wrong I taught it all these years, or back in the day. I haven't taught it in a long time. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm like, what, what's, the, what's the deal with these people that can just upload songs? You know? I mean, it's like, it's not Carly Simon's... Um, channel it's not you know it's not the record labels channel some random person with a thousand subscribers uploads a song and it's got like four hundred thousand views or something and i'm like well that's not i mean i get i get a copyright strike for for teaching about a song and talking over it and playing it and not even playing the original track i won't you know me i will never play the original track to reference i'm not that organized <laughs> okay I think I say I think I got it right, Holly. Thank you. Um, uh, <laughs> so, um, oh, who? Joseph Max. Hey, what's going on? So yeah. So, but the rhythm is one, two. I like to put a little pause in there. I feel like that's kind of just, just. Pause, mute the strings with the side of your right hand, the palm, you know, the side of your your right hand, uh, kind of the meaty part there. Gives it a little breathing room. Okay, let me just go. So D is here. D2 is just take off the second figure. Okay, I'm not going to isolate the second figure. Unless I want to flip off my audience, but you can see... And also, at some point, we're going to do D sus. In fact, she does that whole thing. 
He did that in um, You've Got to Hide Your Love Away, right? Okay, it's always great to have a lot of these kind of little tricks for every chord, okay? Um, because when you're just strumming, um, sometimes some of us, I'm not looking, I'm not accusing anyone specifically, but some of us only have one or two different strumming patterns. So when we go from song to song to song, they tend to all sound the same. It can be a little boring. And so it's always nice to have little, little tricks up your sleeve where you can kind of manipulate the chord to be a little different. You know, if you're singing a melody, it shouldn't, maybe sometimes you might want to be careful because you don't want to sing, be having to sing an F sharp. No, no. Trying to sing an F sharp over a D sus chord might be kind of hard. But, you know, you can always be... Just to have a bunch of those tricks, one of my favorites is... Norwegian wood kind of sus six note on the D chord. I'm reaching up with my pinky to the fourth fret of the third string and I'm hitting that B note. Okay, but I won't I won't go go I won't go. Yeah, I won't do that. But I might go, you know, oh well, I don't want to play six eight because that'll make sound a little rock and, rock and roll if you do it in you know, the wrong places. It's also nice when I play G chord to do that kind of that lick also, but I'm not, I can't really do it with this G chord because our G chord is going to be up here, okay? So again, we have some D to D2 or D two and then back to, to D. And then the G chord, you're going to take your bottom, or your third and fourth fingers and put them on the bottom two strings at the fifth fret. So you're going to get G, because that's, remember, this is D. So D, E, F, G. There's G, or D, E, F sharp, G. So that's G. And then we have D, like you're tuning the D string. And that's exactly what you're going to have those two bringing out against each other. Okay? So we... So actually, the sentiment of this song is great. Um, it's a... It's because, you know, at the time she did this song, she was fairly young. I mean, I don't know. She was probably close to 30 um, uh, in, in the early 70s. Um, but maybe, maybe still, you know, probably still in her 20s, somewhere in there. And um, uh, when you're young like that, you really want, you, there's so many things in your life you want to start happening. You, you want them um to, to happen, like you want to get a house, you want to get married, you want, or just meet somebody, you, you, know, you want to get married, you want to have kids or whatever, all that stuff, you're like, you feel like, oh, I'm so young and I know I got all this stuff ahead of me. And then at the end of the song, she's singing, no, these are the good old days. <laughs> you know, these are the days that we'll be reminiscing about, you know, before we do all that stuff. So it's, uh, it's interesting because when you're young, you're reminiscing about days that haven't even happened yet. And when you're old, you're reminiscing about the days when you were young. So I think it's actually a really, it's a clever lyric, but it's also a poignant lyric that we can all kind of relate to, especially me. I just turned 61 yesterday. So happy birthday to me. And uh, we, um, so, um, so that the, uh, yeah, so it's, it can be, you know, tempting to, now, I've never been one to live in the past. So I, I, I have friends that, like, the best days of their lives were high school. And, uh, you know, I'm just like, yeah, those were, like, not my best days. <laughs> so maybe it's a good thing because I, I was pretty, especially junior high, I was pretty beat up and abused. You know, I was, like, little guy and everybody kind of beat up on me. So I think I don't really look back fondly on those days at all. <laughs> and so... Yeah, exactly, old dog. Um, so, you know, I think maybe that protected me from from being too, you know, modeling. Uh, I'm pretty modeling though, but um, I, I'm more modeling for the days when my kids were little. You know, that makes me kind of tear up. So, okay, so you, this is gonna be one of those things where you kind of have to practice going from 
D, and this six string D chord, which is glorious. Oh, I hit it a little too hard. That's one thing you have to be careful. You don't want to hit that bottom string too hard because you've loosened it. If you have a, maybe a heavier set of strings, you won't have this problem. But if you, and these are actually these are uh, medium, so they're pretty heavy. But if I turn on my tuner, it goes easily 15, 20 cents sharp before it drops down into D. And it, it's still not there. Yeah, so, but if I hit it soft, it, bare, it goes up a little bit. But the string's gonna be looser and gonna be kind of pitchier um, when you drop tune, okay? But, so, you don't wanna hit it too hard. But anyway, so you might wanna just practice going back and forth between this very familiar D shape and this new G shape. And you can also just get one string. I'm getting two strings. I'm getting the top two strings with my first finger at the third fret. You could just get the first string if you wanted to. The other thing is you could also just get the bottom string and then deaden with the fleshy part of your third finger. You could deaden the A string. So you could, you could instead of being this chord where you have you're fretting four, four notes, you could just fret two notes and have an actual third in there, B in there. Because in this one, it's this is basically a G5 chord. Okay, let me let me uh, drag in the, uh, I have the diagram for this. All right. And of course it's massive when I drag it in. I guess it's better than it being too small when I drag it in, but there's the G chord, okay? And I didn't put a little bar line there for the two ones. I just was, I was going really fast this morning. <laughs> so there's probably errors all over the place, hopefully not, but, so that's our G chord, all right? Um, and I don't know, maybe I can make this smaller, keep this up here. Make this a little smaller. And then I can drag in the E minor. Where the, which is the next chord. Uh, where's that? There it is. I wish it was bigger. The little dot that allows me to adjust the size. Um, okay, and like I said, the E minor chord, I already showed you this, but this is good to see the diagram. It's kind of like a, I'm just gonna, well, no, did I show you this? So it's like you took an A chord and moved it up. No, I think I just thought about telling you. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't get much sleep last night. It's like, ugh. I drank too much water. I drank a giant jug of water, which I don't ever do, and I paid the price. All right, so there, oh, that's A, yeah, there's A, and A is just standard A, all right? We're gonna have a G over A, which is actually just the top five strings open. Okay, so, um, and E minor seven too, which is actually even easier than E minor. All right. Um, oh, yes. She, yeah, Carla. I just thought she was kind of adorable. <laughs> um, I always thought Carly Simon was kind of cute. Mm. Just watch. I didn't see, hadn't seen the movie Coda. We just watched the movie Coda on, was that Apple Plus? And um, that was, uh, that was, it was good. I, I you know, it was, a, it was just like tearjerker, you know, <laughs> totally set you up as a tearjerker. Um, but the, the thing that really, I've never liked the song Both Sides Now because I never cared for uh, Judy Collins's voice. Beth doesn't like it either. And, but I knew that it was a Carly, uh, that it was a Joni Mitchell song. It is a freaking great song. In fact, it's a lot similar kind of, the same sentimentality of anticipation, I feel like. Um, and uh, both sides now, you know, you're, you're looking at things and, and uh, you know, clouds were really like cute little things. And then, you know, when you're a kid and then when you're an adult, they're, they're hindrances. You know, they cause rain, rain and snow and they keep the sun, you know, they keep the sun from shining. And it's like your perspective. It's interesting. It's the same thing about anticipation. I think this song is about perspective and how you're, 
over, with time. And both these songs have to do with your perspective changing over time. Um, and so I've always been fairly content, happy soul wherever I'm at. I mean, that may be because of my faith, um, uh, you know, and that's, but I, I know that as Christians, like, I, I believe that every Christian, you know, and every human, actually, whether they're Christian or not, they're given, given a, a spiritual gift. And there is a literal spiritual gift of poverty where you're completely content with very little. And there are, we know, we all know people with that. Mother Teresa clearly had the gift of poverty. She also had probably the gift of compassion was probably her biggest gift. Um, and you can have multiples, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's that contentment, contentment and this song and, and both sides now, which is a great song. I mean, I'm like, Holy cow, the melody too. The melody is an, is only Joni Mitchell would have written that melody. She's got some of the best melodies. And she always does that thing where she takes a note up really high and then comes back down. It's like, man, really, really, really good songwriter. One of the best songwriters. You know, clearly one of my top ten. So, um, so uh, yeah. So, so with this... With the E minor, I'm just taking the A shape that I like to play with these three fingers, okay? The second, third, and fourth fingers. A lot of people play A like this. There's so many ways to play A. You can play A this way. Some people bar it, um, and you can even bar it, and then if you lift your, whoops, let's see, you go like this, you can see I'm bending my fingers so that I'm still getting the E string open. Some people do that. That's a little awkward for me. Um, some people do this. See that? Instead of playing, putting the, First, second, and third, you're going second, first, and third, kind of like two and three, like the area code in Los Angeles. Uh, but that's, and then the flamenco way, so there, I mean, how many ways is that? There's bar, okay? There's, you, you could bar and put your pinky up here. But there was a song I was going to show you today that did that chord, and I was like, ah, that might be too hard. So it was one of the three that I worked on towards getting. Um, you could do it like this is a flamenco way. Like flamenco players will do it where they bar two strings and then put your second finger there. It's so they can kind of get that B flat kind of sound on top of the A. So, um, and then there's these three, this way is how I usually play it. And then this way, and then this way. That's a lot of ways to play an A chord. But if you play it like this, however you play it, move it up two strings to the, towards the ceiling. That with a drop D tune, you remember, yo, we're in drop D. That is E minor. Okay? That chord right there. E minor. And then A is just A. So we go back to A. So we have. Um, So I'm just taking, when I play A, like I play A like this, when I play A sus, I just slide my pinky finger up to the third fret. Do that big. I think that's, that second, that third line of the verse is where that comes in. Um, and then it goes to E minor 7. E minor 7 is, you can just do E minor, just take E minor chord slide. Okay, so that E minor 7 is just the bottom two strings at the second fret. So 2, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0. I heard that D string in there, so it's just a much more jazzy sounding chord almost. And then the A, G over A, you could just play the top five strings open. You want to avoid that bottom string though. Keep that A, a in the bass so it keeps the focus on the five chord. So it sounds like a five chord. Okay. All right. Are we talking about brownies? You making brownies for my birthday? Um, laced brownies? Sorry, I'm late. Um, it's my last scheduled cardio rehab. And I have to make brownies for everyone for having put up with me and my sense. <laughs> Wait a minute. 
Isn't Art Brownies kind of counterintuitive for cardio rehab? <laughs> Are they happy brownies? <laughs> oh, so I'm sorry, Joseph. Let's see. So moving ring and pinky down and up strings works pretty good. Just experiment. Yeah, yeah. And you can even go go to like A2 like that. Uh, e minor seven. And you could play E minor seven instead of um, E minor if you wanted to. I'll see. See, that just sounds a little too open. I like it's more pure, just a pure E minor. I'm talking about the second line of the of the verse. And I wonder. Oh shoot! I didn't write out D major seven. Okay. It's easy, I just didn't write it out. That's a great, you gotta get that down if you don't have that down. We did it in, in the Beatles' Hide Your Love Away song, but it's D sus to D, to D2, take off that second finger, and then put that second finger back down, and you get D again. So D sus, D2, D, I'm sorry, D sus, D, D2, D. I, I, I'm not gonna put that in because it would, it would you know, make that too busy, too long. And it doesn't do it every time. It's just every now and then she, she does it. And it, it, again, it's one of those little tricks you could do to kind of make, it's two bars of D, so you got to do something. <laughs> it's just, too, you know, and the tempo is not like. Actually, it's three bars of D if you take this, the last two bars of the first line of the verse and the, and the first bar of the second line of the verse. So, you know, it's it's a lot of D, so you got to do, you got to do something in there, all right? Um, hold on a second, let me aim this a little bit more at me. It's all about me, you know. There we go, that's better. You see my guitar better now. Um, yeah, I haven't done a video for my channel in a month. I have one sitting on my computer that's, I'm halfway through editing, uh, but it's, it's, it's kind of one of those, it's, it's kind of part of a series, and I'm, I'm not still convinced that I like the, the beginning part, so I'm kind of, <laughs> yeah, it would be bad for diabetic rehab, yeah. Snuck up on me. Okay. So what what happens then? Uh, the second half of the verse, you know. So that's the third line. Now we're going to E minor seven. It does something like that. It may, I don't think it did that. But or maybe something. Something like that, like a like the G top of the G chord, and then just the A string in the bottom. But you can just get away with it's just for a second anyway. Um, playing the top five strings open, so we're going to call that a G over A, and then to A, and then D. You can like hit the bottom few strings, and then it goes to G. And this is a great chord. That's the money chord. I always talk about money chord, and I forgot to write this one out. But all you gotta do is bar the top three strings at the, at the on the uh, second fret, and you play all six strings because that's the beauty of the drop D. You got this glorious D major seven chord. So it's. See, I'm kind of imitating the drums there, or the piano. You know, I'm just kind of the bit, piano gets really busy right there, especially on the second chorus. So I, you know, a lot of times I'll just get busier on the acoustic guitar to to emulate that when you're, especially if you're by yourself, if you have a piano player, let the piano player do it. But hey, Catherine, where did Gene go? I know, right? Oh yeah. No, I'm not, fortunately I'm not too behind on everything, but I've got, I've just been slammed with, with work, which is great. And I had church this weekend and birthday celebrations and stuff. So, um, so, Is we're 
we're going to go to this E minor. And I love this chord. I love it. It's just, it, I don't know. I love playing the A chord. It just feels good in the hands, you know? Um, and like I said, I use these three fingers because if I use the first three fingers, they're just a little too fat. So if I get rid of the first finger and substitute in the pinky, it makes for a little bit more real estate. You know, it gives my fingers a little bit more real estate to squeeze in there. Let it ring to, again. Is keeping me Similar to the first. Piano's pretty busy here. And then it goes. That's such a money chord. And I bet you that it was an accident. It was like, like, oh I oh shoot, I gotta put that. Wait, I like that. You know, it's kind of one of those chords, it's like it was reverb pedal I was going to choose and some guy answered R6 is been oh nice the RV6 is that the, the boss one boss pedals are pretty real stinking reliable I mean the cases on those things alone are insanely solid <laughs> you know I, I ha I'm sure I have one right here but yeah like here's a boss I mean this thing's like cast iron like Unbreakable. And I got these plastic ones. <laughs> I actually love these little pedals, but you, I couldn't take something like this on the road. I have multiples of these because they just, they're made of plastic, so they just, but yeah. And then so many manufacturers kind of do things that are like built on um, uh, uh, the MXR kind of rounded edges, rectangular shape. I have an MXR somewhere. Oh, here it is. Like, this is the, one, the first distortion pedal I ever got was an MXR Distortion Plus. So This isn't the one, though. I don't know what happened to my original one. I probably lost it or sold it or something. Uh, that's a replacement. So, yeah. Pedals are addictive. <laughs> Pedals are very addictive. Um, it is a Heinz commercial. Yeah, it's a, I think the song Anticipation is like 71, 72. Maybe it, no, you know, it could be later than that. Look it up. Anybody look it up? Uh, bum, bum, bum. Curly Simon. Yeah, she had that, those that big mouth. <laughs> Just a big mouth. And, and consequently a big smile. Okay, so it, it charted number 30, 71. No, I was right. Um, Anticipation. B-side was The Garden. I don't know that song. What are some other Carly Simon songs, though, that are really good? Well, You're So Vain is great. You Belong to Me. You Belong to Me. The thing I love about that one is that um, Michael McDonald um, uh, is singing backgrounds on it. Like, there wasn't a song in, like, there was, like, two years. Um... There was, there hasn't been a song in um, two years. I mean, there were, yeah, in the, it was two years in the seventies where every song had Michael McDonald in the background. <laughs> so, well, that's awesome, Yusuf. Hey, Pepper's in the house. What's going on, Pepper? I'm wearing pants, by the way. You can close your eyes with James Taylor. Yeah, and I'll tell you another one. I, I really like, she did like a kind of a, a standard album. And um, <clears throat> interesting. Alex is 
head gasket blew on his Subaru. He was having temp prep problems with uh, his, um, sorry, I'm trying to get my windows organized here. Okay, there and here. Uh, Alex was having problems with the Subaru overheating, but every time it got in, you know, it, 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 the two times it overheated, he was pulling into his driveway. So it was perfect. So it was like, okay, well, uh, you know, then they, I had him towed once and then he towed it another time to the deal because they couldn't find anything wrong with it. So the first time they replaced the hose. Uh, the second time they couldn't find anything wrong with it and they had it for the week and then they did a pressure check on it and the pressure check said fine, head gasket was fine. And now the head gasket's blown. So they had it for a week and they were running tests on it and stuff like that, driving it around, trying to get it to overheat. And I think they blew the head gasket. <laughs> so he's trying to figure out, like, he's got to buy a new car, but he's like, do they, oh, they, uh, you know, he can't afford, he's not going to spend the $3,700 to get a new head gasket. So he's going to, he's just going to go and say, you know, apply that towards a new car or a newer car. I hate cars. I hate owning cars. Just hate it. He's got Beth's car right now. So, um, cause he doesn't have a car otherwise. So, and Beth is off for the next couple of weeks. So, or a few, like six weeks off. So, Hey Bruce, you're on. Just crossed into Texas. I've been lurking with a phone battery. Almost gone. Thanks so much, uh, for the condolences. Yes. It's a bummer. Oh, thank you Pepper for the happy birthday wishes. Yep. It's the 10th. 61. I took I turned I was born in 61 and I turned 61. So if you go back 61 years from my birth, it'd be 1900. <laughs> it just doesn't seem possible. Yeah, cars are crazy money, and he's looking at getting a used soup, so I don't know. We need to take we need to take up donations for Alex. He's like poor kid. Okay, so um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in this song. The only thing is that these are the good old days. I love this part because they changed it to like a C major seven sound, but it's actually uh, like an E minor over over G. And I have this chord here. So when you uh, where come on, where's that dot? There it is. Okay, so the these are the good old days part. Is D. So we before the intro was the C over D. Again, so that's that upper upper uh, right hand corner right up here. Nope, up here. All right, uh, that's C over D, and then right next to it I did the E minor over D. Um, and you, you could do it with your these three fingers like that, like playing a D minor. Basically, is what you do is slide. It's like play D, play D minor, slide it up two frets, and you got E minor over D. And uh, if we're going to be uh, super particular about the name of the chord, see. Oh, I see. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, she's not doing this one. Yeah, she's just doing this. She's doing this. So, so uh, Sam is watching the video, and she says, uh, cause "Yeah, and you can get away with things like that because the bass. If you have a bass player, um, if you're playing it by yourself, you're probably going to want to have that G in the bass. You're going to want to play this G. But if if you just do this and play the, you're saying that it's like she plays the B." Um, yeah, so if you, if you take this D and go like this and B, basically it would be a G over B. Um, you could totally do that if you had a bass player. Wouldn't matter. So you don't need this big jump. So that would save time. Yeah, so, um, oh, you don't, I don't have to sing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So here's the intro. It's a very short intro, which is unusual for that era.
drum fell to boom, tease it. interesting about this is what are we coming from right before we go to the course we do that C over D chord right so that kind of implies the key of G or kind of implies a, a D mixolydian or something but it's it's definitely kind of more like D7 kind of implies a D7 or D9, D9 thing um, and so that makes that D major 7 even more uh, surprising because that D major 7 has that C sharp in it, which is in the key of D. It's totally because you got an A chord. If you got an A chord, there's a C sharp. So that's what makes that kind of jump out. Uh, so. And that's the thing. So Carly would probably have, you know, she would probably not go to that. She would probably do something like this where you're going D. And then you go into like a G over B, okay? But on the recording, it's for sure drop D, which I never noticed back in the, you know, when I was 18 years old teaching this song. Um, I had a lot of, I had a lot of girl students back then when I first started teaching. So a lot of girl students. And so they, you know, I was always looking for songs like this that I could teach, uh, that they could sing. So, um, oh, thanks. Holly's <laughs> doing uh, Bruce's job here. I do teach a lesson every Monday, although I didn't teach last Monday. I was just, well, it was the 4th of July and we had people coming over and I was going to do a jam, but people weren't showing up on time. And by the time everybody showed up, it was time to have dinner. And then once everybody had dinner, it was like they were in the pool and it was just like, yeah, and I'm not going to get a bunch of wet people in here to do a jam session. I, it would have been fun because we had the makings of at least two bands at the house uh, on the 4th of July. But yeah, so... end is uh kind of jumps into that but yeah so um so there's there's a lot of things here to pick up from you know like the, just going to that d major stuff again having that money chord that one chord that just kind of jumps out and and you know one of the things i love doing hey peter good to see you a long time um one of the things i love to do and we may do the well see if i do it i can't i this is a video i'd love to do with rick beato like if i could do a video with rick beato I would do this one because I, I I think we would we would agree on a lot of stuff, but we'd also have different opinions about what a, the hook of a song is, um, and uh, not in general, but of specific songs. Um, and so I always say, you know, a hook of the song could be could be a chord. Usually, you know, probably the largest the the most likely hook for a song is going to be, and I'm talking about pop songs, you know, rock pop songs, whatever, contemporary music. Um, the hook for Beethoven's fifth is bum, 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 bum. There's your hook. Boom. Done. Okay. Uh, he, he, and then he milks the hook. <laughs> uh, it's a classic example of theme and variations. I mean, he invented it practically. So, um, but, uh, the, um, uh, but yeah, so, um, like, I feel like, Usually the hook is probably the most common thing that the hook is, is the chorus melody. But a hook can be a lyric. Um, a hook, like I always say, the hook is the thing that makes the 15-year-old the 15 year, old, 15 year old girls call the radio station and go, can you play that song again? Play that song that, you know, I, it was me, you know, I went to Tower Records because I heard a song on K-Rock. And I was like, oh my God, I love this song. Um, and it was, uh, it, it was like, I couldn't remember anything about it. Like by the time I, you know, I was on the road, I heard the song, it probably 18 more songs. I think I even turned off the radio. So I would like try to remember, so I wouldn't forget that song. Cause I'm like, man, 
I had no idea at the time that they'd be playing it a lot more. But, you know, when you hear a song, you're like, wow, what is that? So I went to Tower Records, and the Tower Records in Pasadena was giant. Uh, well, I guess all Tower Records were giant, but it was a really big record store. And I asked one of the guys, and I said, the only thing I can remember is <laughs> the electric guitar, when it came in, it sounded like... Um, it sounded like a car engine. It was like, kukunk, kukunk, kukabun, like that. And he goes, oh, that, you know, that's a uh, creep by Radiohead. Yeah, it's like, it's amazing to me that, um, uh, <laughs> that, you know, he got that from that. Uh, but it was, at the moment, it was a fairly well, you know, it was on K-Rock, and so people knew it. And if you worked at a record store, you probably definitely knew who Radiohead was. Um, and that was from their first record, Creep was. So, it, but to me, that was the hook. I'm a creep. I'm a, that, that melody's great, and it, the melody's definitely hooked. But the hook, the thing that brought that that pulled me into the song was that entrance of the electric guitar. So there's similar things like that. Jack was trying to think of a song, and he couldn't think of it. And he asked, called up Alex, and he said. What's what's the song that goes womp 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 like that? <laughs> and it was it was um, uh, what's the uh, Santos and Santos um, uh, uh, walk something walk what is that called a sleepwalk whatever whatever it is and um, uh, and so that's obviously the hook for that song so. That's funny. She dated everybody, didn't she? <laughs> Carly Simon got around. Oh, my gosh. I didn't realize she dated Cat Stevens. Yeah, I knew she dated James Taylor, and then she also dated that. You're So Vain was – There's. I don't know if she still admits that or not, but You're So Vain was written about um, – who's the actor? Not not Gear, Richard Gere, the uh, – shoot. Oh, you saw Lobos, Los Lobos, nice, and and Tedeschi. I bet that was a great show. Oh, I mean, what's the last show I saw? I haven't seen a show in a while. I think I'm going to go see my nephew on, later this month. He's in town with with a band, um, not a band I've ever heard of, but he can he gets these gigs where he travels around, he tours with these bands, and you know. I guess they have a record out and the label, you know, will pay them a little bit to, to, to try to get a fan base it's so hard. Oh my gosh. And it's especially hard in Los Angeles because it, Los Angeles is such a, such a cynical, well, for one thing, any one night you could probably, especially now that COVID is pretty much over here in LA, everybody's ignoring everything. And so <laughs> you can pretty much go, you could see live music in about 50 different venues in LA. <laughs> so, the competition is brutal. And every one of those venues, and I did this for years, every one of those venues will have four bands that night. So you you could potentially be competing against 200 other bands every night in Los Angeles. You go to a smaller town and you might not have, you, you won't be like that. You go to San Diego, it's not going to be like that. Or you go to, um, you know, Bakersfield or, uh, you know, most of these bands, they tend to hit the big cities. And I'm like, you know, New York is probably even worse. You could probably see... 400 bands in Manhattan in any one night, but, um, yeah, I, well, that's funny. I saw, ja I, I saw Jackson Brown at the hi-hat in Highland Park and I talked to him afterwards. He, he was performing for about 50 people. <laughs> so it was just a bar. It's called the hi-hat in Highland Park. And it, the only reason I knew about it was because his pedal steel player was a friend of Alex's or something. The guy warming him up was a friend of Alex's. So Alex and I went over there and, he had the best acoustic guitar tone, so I asked him, I said, what, what the heck are you using for your acoustic guitar tone? It's amazing, you know, plug-in acoustic. And he showed me the pedal and everything he had. I have it somewhere. I have pictures of it. Um, not cheap, <laughs> but really, really solid. And it wasn't a uh, Sunrise system. It wasn't a Sunrise system. It was actually, yeah, he, he was plugged in. I think he had a mic and a pickup in it, but he actually really, he liked that I asked him that because, you know, it wasn't like, hey, I heard you uh, 
did a lot of drugs in the sec- 60s or the 70s. Well, you know, it wasn't like some weird, you know, it was like, hey, what kind of, it was tech talk. So he liked that. Um, wow, you, you, okay. CZ Top on July 3rd, two sets and then fireworks. Cut short their show. Oh my gosh. But they did two sets. ZZ, ZZ Top? They lost their bass player, right? Let's think about ZZ Top as they ne- they could they never age. They don't look any different than they did in the 70s. Um, well, thank you, Timothy, for the birthday r- wishes. Um, yeah, it's uh, but I, I think Anticipation is a pretty good song. You know, it's a, I think I think it's a very good song, and and you know it's the the ketchup commercial probably made her a fortune, but she she's already done well. Uh, I don't know what's her net worth. <laughs> you ever do that? Well, and did she write songs for other people too? I mean, her net worth is probably more like it says forty five million. It's probably a, probably has more than like. I think she came from a wealthy family. Um, let's see. Her, her dad was a publisher, right? Born in New York City, Richard Simon. Co- yeah, Simon, Simon Schuster. Schuster. Oh, now he's probably, I'm sure, passed away. Oh, he died in 1960. Wait, that's her dad. Dang. So, her father, Richard. Yeah, Richard was the co-founder. So he was born in her dad was born in 1899. Isn't that crazy? So when was she born? Because I was wondering how old she was when she did that. Born in 45. Okay. So. Oh, they don't. It says 43 or 45. <laughs> well, I'm going to go with the earlier one because that's just typical for for celebrities. Um, uh, let's see. You can almost add five years to most celebrities. I am 61. So, um, uh, so yeah. So her dad was si- uh, Simon and Schuster, and I I knew that. I just forgot that. Uh, so he played piano at home. Um, so, but he, he died in 1960. So she was, she was 17 or 15 or 17 when her dad died. That's so sad, but he was, so he would have been 50, 46 when she was born. Um, but he died at age 61. So, you know. Oh, it does say death. What was his death? Oh, a heart attack. And they were in the Bronx. So, you know, Simon & Schuster might not have been giant back when he, you know, was running it. Who knows? We all know it, but... um, And publishing is not the same business it was, obviously, back in the day. Um, So... Oh, they stopped for their water breaks, as explained by Billy. Good morning, Christopher. Good to see you. Hey, Sco, what's going on? Thank you, Sco. Thank you for the birthday wishes. That's, yeah, it's funny that she wrote that in 15 minutes, though. That that doesn't surprise me. Um... I mean, there probably were some changes made along the way, obviously. I think it would be hard to literally, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't chart this out in 15 minutes. I, it took me 30 minutes to get this to all this crud, crud here. Um, but, and I've written in, you know, I've got book, stacks of books full of songs. Um, and so I, I don't know if you could write all those lyrics out in 15 minutes, unless you were like a speed writer. Um, what's a D? It's not a DA chord. It's a... Uh, D major seven. That's a triangle. So I use the delta sign to the triangle to denote major seven, and um, that's basically this. So I'm so sorry that I didn't have. Well, you know what? You guys don't mind watching an episode of CSI. I can I can create I can create that right now. Let's see. And then and then bounce it to a screenshot. All right, where are you? Um, 
this would have been there. So I create these diagrams on pages, and I have all of the so I have all of these that I need. So what I'm going to do is basically just And that major symbol is something I've used, that triangle is something I've used from way back when. And I don't remember what when I saw it. Oh, where did you go? Now see, you disappeared? Why did you do that? Why did you jump down? I don't understand. Sometimes there's like a ghost in the machine. Now let's click on this. I'm going to make this deep triangle. So the way you get, I don't know if it's the same with PC with PCs, but if you go Option J or, or Alt J, I think it's another Alt J. In fact, there's a band called Alt J, and I think they they were trying to be the Delta sign. So like the Delta sign has a lot of connotations, you know, the triangle thing or whatever. Um, so I'm just going to, ah, is this going to disappear back there? Okay, let's just do that. Okay. So I'm not even going to put fingers on it. Just put a bar there. And then this is deep. Screen grab. Okay. Save, quit. Where are you? There you are. All right. All right. Done. Fascinating episode of CSI. Joe killed Bob. <laughs> I figured it out. Um, okay, so now I need to go to downloads. All this for Joe. <laughs> it's because he, he gave me $4. He bought my coffee. Of course I got to do something for Joe. All right. So there's now it's there, and now it's here. Boom. All right. Quite an exciting show we run here, huh? So there's D major seven, if you're wondering. Let me put it up here. What a mess this is. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like an A chord. You could play it like an A chord, too. The only thing is you're coming from that G, you might as well just grab your bar. You know, grab, you're already barring there. Just go like that. You could, you could take an A chord, move it down. You definitely, you know, it's the notes in are D, A, D, A. So you got D, A, D, A. So you get a lot of power chord here. Okay. And then, and then you got a C sharp. There's the major seventh. And then you have an F sharp, which is the third. Okay. If we wanted a D7, it would be this. It would be a, a minor seventh or a dominant seventh is what it's called. Dominant seventh chord. Okay. And there would be sixth. Another thing you can do with a D chord, right? We're talking about you can, uh, that Kiss Me song, right? Uh, kiss Me. And then uh, a, thing, a song, another thing you can do with the D chord is you can go D to D augmented to D6 to back. And that's... No, it actually goes back and forth. To Eddie Money, who was a cop in Brooklyn. Was he a cop in Bronx or Brooklyn? Before he became a rock star. It's a great story. I had a friend uh, that toured with Eddie probably for 20 years playing bass for him. Uh, I think he really loved Eddie. He loved the gig. Um, <laughs> I could buy another six pack. Dang it! I wish I wish you had a, a, a dollar for every song. <laughs> but I think one of the things about that is, that, you know, you could probably take every pop song. Well, pop songs in particular, they're far more crafted. You know. Um. I mean, it's a pop music in particular today, but even back in the Beatles' time, was a producer's milieu. 
um, you know, it pop changed a lot in the Beatles era. And um, prior to that, it was more like a band would have some songs and those songs you could definitely write in 15 minutes. Some of those songs, you know, I want to hold your hand. I bet the Beatles, I bet John and Paul wrote some of those songs really fast. Um, and I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a negative uh, to, to craft a song. Um, there's the art of songwriting. There's the craft of songwriting. What's the difference? When I think of crafting, I'm like, yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of using more formulas or whatever. Um, I, I, I really can only speak to it on my own, in, in, in my own writing. I know the difference between when I've written this, you know, it's an art of songwriting and the craft of songwriting. And almost invariably, the songs I've written that I crafted, I didn't like. In other words, I really pulled out all the tools and I really tried to make the hook right. And I'd really try to do them. And those songs, I, yeah, I didn't really, I, I, to me, they weren't as good as the songs that just kind of came spontaneously, which speaks to, you know, this kind of thing. Now, to say that today's pop isn't written that way, no, that's not true at all. A lot of songs are um, basically pretty quick and simple little ideas. Um, but in the studio, it could take a day or two to kind of flush it out or flesh it out or flush it out. <laughs> Depending if you don't like the song at the end or not, you know. And, uh, and so it may take some time to kind of figure out all the elements to the song. And, but then again, that gets more into the production thing. But, you know, but if you and even changing the chord here and there, producers totally has that, hey, you know, we should go to the minor sub, uh, the, you know, minor, we should minor substitute on the second chorus or something. Things like that, that can happen in the production stage of songs. Um, but a lot of the greatest songs ever written were written very quickly. And... Um, Mainly because it's it's just about capturing a thought or an emotion or a moment, and uh, a photograph can do that really well. Um, uh, painting not quite so fast, um, but a song can do it a lot faster generally than a symphony. A symphony is a painting, a song is a snapshot, um, and yet a, a photograph you know can say a thousand words, right? Picture says a, tells a What's the saying? Picture says tells a thousand words. Picture's worth a thousand words. Um, and uh, <laughs> what's the best section? You're going to drop some 15 minute lyrics. Yeah, that you know, you just never know. You never know when, you know, you get that thing going on. And, and uh, she wrote anticipation probably like if she's, she says she was waiting for Cat Stevens to show up. He was 15 minutes late. So there's her lyric. And, uh, you know, again, it's a, that's a, that's a, um, you know, in, in Nashville, they really craft songs, I think. Uh, there's teams that really, you know, the two people or three people sometimes that will really craft a song. I feel like Nashville songs tend to be more crafted than spontaneous. A lot of rock songs, I think, tend to be more spontaneous, especially historically. Um, I mean, look at, look at, uh, Life in the fast lane, right? You know, he had a lick that he used as a warm up for a sound check. And uh, was it Don Henley said that that would make a great song? We should write a song around it. It was uh, Joe Walsh. It was his warm up lick. And it, it may be one of our songs at one of these points. I just don't know what to do with the rhythm guitar, you know. You know, I could, we could do a lesson where we just learn a bunch of riffs. That might be a fun thing, but uh, I, I, I hesitate to do that because guitar players always get accused of, okay, you play the song, but you didn't play the whole song, <laughs> right? I'm horribly guilty of this. Uh, you know, at the beat, take the guitar to the beach and you start. And somebody goes, oh, I love that song. And they get into it and then they're like, okay, now play the, oh, I don't know, that's all I know. <laughs> Well, you're not going to play the song, you know, life in the, you're not going to do the song. I'm like, no, I don't know the rest of it. Or it's hard. You can't really, you're sitting on a beach with a classical guitar and it's hard to do life in the fast lane with the flanging and everything. You know, it's like, you're just like, yeah, or you could do, this is the worst. You start Stairway to Heaven and then everybody's like, play the whole song. 
okay, I do know that whole song, but really? <laughs> You're going to sing the whole song? You're going to sit here while I go, you know? <laughs> you know, it's like, what is it? You know, it's like all the... <laughs> It does that like five times. It goes through that one section. You really gonna you gonna sing it? You know, then great, I'll play it. So that's why guitar players often have that that you know problem with not finishing songs, just playing the intros because it's that's where the fun is. And that in, in so many songs, I would say the number one to go full circle here, the number one location of a hook in a song is probably the chorus melody. Um, but keep in mind, you know, we're talking about. 13, 14, 15 year old listeners on the radio. How long are you taking to get to that chorus? Some songs start with a chorus, start with a hook like that. Um, other songs like Life in the Fast Lane, the hook is clearly that guitar riff. You know, the melody is a throwaway melody. The lyrics are kind of stupid. Um, same with uh, Day, Day Tripper. Day Tripper, yeah. Day Tripper. No, the, the, the hook on that song is the riff. So that, and the, the thing about those hooks is they're right at the front of the song. Okay. So it's real easy to kind of go, Oh, there's the hook on that one. Um, and, uh, so, Oh, I may do a video on my, my trick for getting rid of tinnitus. I may do a video on that. I talk, I told Rick Beato about it cause he was talking about tinnitus and, um, and I, I uh, emailed him and said, "Hey, you want me to, you know, sh can I show you, you know, how to do it?" But he, he had he didn't uh, he didn't reply, but which is not unusual. Um, we've just spoken once, but um, he's going to be in LA, I think, in August twentieth or something like that. Um, I should go because a lot of my friends are going to be there. Um, but uh, he. Um, He, uh, um, yeah, he mentioned that he had tinnitus, and I have really bad tinnitus. And I have a cure that works, but it only lasts about 60 seconds. But I showed it to my dentist who has bad tinnitus, and my dentist has been, like, he's, he's older than I am, so he's got to be 65 or even close to 70. So he's been doing this for 40-plus years, and it's the drill. It's the drilling is that frequency just fried his ears so i showed him the trick for tinnitus i don't know if any of you have tinnitus um oh my goodness brian you're in you're in uh what time zone are you um oh you're writing lyrics <laughs> never mind 25 or 6 to 4 is that what you're writing um and uh he i showed him the trick and um, he, he, I told him though, when I did it, I said, look, it's only going to last a minute. So all it's going to do is remind you what you used to have. Uh, so it's kind of actually depressing. So that, that's the, that's the big kind of warning of it all. But, um, when I've showed people, I said, look, you don't, you know, now if you can fall asleep really quick at night, like if you're, your head hits the pillow and you're out, um, if, or if you're that type of person, but but you're struggling with tinnitus at night and you have to run fans or whatever white noise things to kind of mask it. Um, uh, then, then this might work because you, if it lasts a minute or two and you can hit your fall asleep. Uh, but if you've been battling tinnitus for a long time, you've probably gotten out of the habit of being able to fall asleep like that. Um, so, okay. So, um, the trick, okay. It's really simple. But I, there's there's something I have to show you. So basically, take your hands like this, okay? You're going to put them on the top of a table. Just put them on top of a table. You're like, what? And then take your index fingers and put them on top of your, your middle finger like this. I'll do a video for this and post it, I think. I'll probably get people saying, you made me deaf. You know, but anyway. Um, so, so you see that, what, what I'm doing there? Now, what you're going to do is you're going to, push your index finger down so it it, it slaps. So it, on the table, it sounds like this. Hear that? So I'm just going, plop, plop. I'm just pushing down, letting my first finger slide off on my second finger onto the tabletop. Just ignore it. Okay, so you got that. So now that you got that, that 
that part of it down. That's really the whole thing. So what you do then, and you're like, really? That's it? No. Here's what you do. So you put your palms on your ears like this, and then you do that on the back of your head like that. Okay? So I'll do it again. Watch. You're going to do it 50 times. 5-0. No, there's no magic number. It probably works after 20, uh, but 50 seems to be better. It lasts a little bit longer. Um, you do that 50 times. So it'll take you about, I don't know, you can do probably two per second. Two, three, four, five, six, One, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. It's all gone. It's the weirdest thing. My dentist cried. <laughs> he was like so happy. But he also knew it wasn't going to last. So um, it's still there. But yeah, it, it works. So Sam, yeah, try that. But if you fall asleep easily, you might be able, it might work. I don't think it, it lasts five minutes. I wish it lasts five minutes. If, if it lasted five minutes, I think that would be a really, really usable cure for going to sleep at night. Because you, if you're really tired, you do that right before you go to bed, right at, you sit on the side of the bed, you do it, and then you lay down. I mean, I hear the tonight is starting to come back now, but it's, it's fainter than it normally is. So, uh, so yeah, I, <laughs> So my birthday was yesterday, and um, uh, I, I uh, it was really fun. Um, of course, church, Alex remind, let them know that it was my birthday. They didn't know, and of course, they got a cake and all that, and saying happy birthday was pretty fun. Not church, but uh, yep, yep, you were born in upside down 61, yep, or the right side of 61. I'm not sure. I'm on the other side of 61 now, though. I'm in this side of 61. Um, so, um, but yeah, Alex found an old um, Mutron wah pedal. Um, let's see if I can, I don't think I can get it up here. Let's see. How long is the cord? It's plugged in to power. Let me see if I can. So, yeah, here it is. So, it's got a really long cord on it. Look at this thing. Plugs in. Oh, it's on. I can turn it off. Now, the thing about this pedal, and this is from the 70s, the thing about this pedal is it's got, um, and let's see, nothing's plugged in. So, if I have to plug something in for it to work, but if I go to instrument here, you can see you can have it. It's a wah or a volume pedal. If neither of these switches are engaged, it does nothing. But it's cool because it can be a volume pedal, right? So you got a volume pedal. On the same pedal, you have a wah pedal. All right? But the funny thing is what pe people use this for is they turn both on. So now you have a volume pedal. So it's dead quiet. And then you, volume, you swell in at the same time as you get the filter swell. And that is what people use it for. Um, and uh, the thing I, the song that really makes me is uh, You are the boy in my life, Chicago. You are my inspiration. Just you and me. I was always like, how did he, how did Terry Kath get that sound? That just you and me, wow, wow. It's like this wah wah and vodka. And I actually, um, my rig, my lexicon rig years ago could do this. Uh, because I could actually turn on the volume and the watt at the same time, and that's when I realized, you know, like about 20 years ago, that that's how he did it. Oh, brilliant. But I don't really use my lexicon rig in this. In, I use it for church, but I don't really use it for um, for my session, for studio work in my studio. <coughs> so I, I, don't, I haven't had that capability. Well, what I'll do is I'll have a volume pedal and a wall pedal engaged, and I'll just do two feet, which is, you know, Kind of hard. <laughs> you can't do it standing up, that's for sure. Yeah, it's a big pedal, but um, 
it's fine. It's just here in my studio. I mean, it's no bigger. It's no bigger than my normal volume pedal. So here's my normal volume pedal. This is actually a really, really good volume pedal. The Boss FV500H. I don't know. It's got. Uh, it can be used as an expression pedal. I think it has a tuner in. It, it has a volume. Oh, I didn't realize it was set to the minimum volume. That's weird. Um, but yeah, it's super solid. It's not a it's not a wire or a string. I I like the Ernie Ball ones, but I kept breaking them, and I'm, I'm I was tired of pay, spent paying a hundred bucks for a pedal that kept breaking, and so, um, so I I got this one because Alex recommended it, and it's about the most it's the most solid pedal I own. Well, you know, Boss stuff is really well made. I mean, you know, like I said, the the Boss um, distortions. Of course, this <laughs> this is a modded out distortion. Look at these little switches on the side this is a jhs this is a i forget what they call this it's even got an, a different led in there it's like a oh it's a synth drive is what this is like a synthesizer um they turned it they, they used the innards and changed it um let's see what else um thank you charlie b oh sorry you already said i saw it Happy, I just saw the happy birthday part of your text. All right. So let's see what else we got here. Uh, yeah, we've been pretty steady just in the 20s. We haven't really gotten up there very much. I could easily pass for 51. Well, maybe. I don't know. I'm trying to, I, if you could see my eyes, maybe you would, it would give it away. Well, I do get told, I get told that all the time, though. I mean, I looked like, when I got married, I looked like I was 13 years old. <laughs> I looked like Beth was marrying a little boy. <laughs> You're pretty funny. So, yeah, I've always kind of, like Paul McCartney, always kind of had that boyish thing, I guess, going on. I don't know. I don't know. It's, I, I'm not boyish like Paul. It's just something about, you know, when you don't do drugs, you don't drink, you don't, you know, you get enough sleep, uh, you know, you don't carouse. I mean, I... I've lived a pretty sheltered life, but intentionally. So, uh, I, you know, I don't work in the field anywhere. You know, I'm not like outdoors working a lot. I'm, I got a studio, what we call a studio tan, which means if I take my shirt off outside, people have to put, put sunglasses on. But they, it's, a Holly, it's a Hollywood thing. You know, you've got a studio tan because you, you work in the studios. You're never outdoors. Uh, a lot of jobs are like that. So there are a lot of people that have that same kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right, Brian. It kind of does look like a, a a chalk. That's called a chalk, right? Is it spelled C H A L K chalk, or or is that or am I thinking something else? But we used to say chalk up your tires, but that meant to burn rubber, right? That's, is that the right word? What am I thinking? I often get words wrong. Oh, chalk. More definitions. Click on that. Write or draw with chalk. No, it's not. So what's the word I'm trying to think of? Farmer's tan. Well, yeah, farmer's tan would be like tan arms and no, yeah, the torso is very white. Yeah, yeah. And I have a lot of relatives with that. <laughs> Beth does in particular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've done that. You look at, or I saw, a vi well, I saw the video of me when they were singing "Happy Birthday" to me at church. I saw the video, and I just like be right before I walked in the door of the green room where we we hang out between services, I had just put a, a um, breath mint in my mouth. Right, I just had breakfast and I wanted to have breath mint, and so I put a breath mint in my mouth, and I'm chewing on it. you know i'm trying to crack it and break it and chew it up so i kind of look like i'm i'm an old man in the room kind of gumming like it looked like i was gumming my you know chewing mama gums or something it was so weird i'm like oh my gosh i look so old in that video i was like oh, wheel chuck oh it's a c-h-o c-h-o-c-k yeah so it's pronounced the same way 
chalk, yeah, and a wheel chalk. So that's what that's called, the thing you're talking about that, yeah, <laughs> that you can totally use these uh, volume pedals for. Well, you think that's big. I mean, check out this. This is... This is... Um, called a wazoo. And um, it's a wah also, but it's cool because it has a vintage wah thing, it has an auto wah, it has a step wah, and then you could create your own pattern. Uh, you can create your own sequence. I'm not even sure how to do that. Uh, they don't even make this anymore. Um, and it's got the step sequencer has different sequences you can use and the auto wah sensitivity. I basically use it as a pure auto wah kind of thing, or pure wah kind of thing. Um, and it's got a tap, you can tap a tempo in there, which is really cool. Um, I guess you could also use it to switch modes. You could have a mode. So you could hook it up to MIDI. But yeah, it's cool. And made in the US. Man, I can't beat that. I think, yeah, the boss one was probably made in Japan. I don't know. So I got a lot of pedals on the floor right now. Whew. So um, let's see what else. I have been hooping over them in the garage. We have some. Oh, you have chalk? Oh, you have chalk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they come in handy. I'll tell you what. It's better than having the car roll down the hill. Uh, there are some in neighborhoods in L.A. where, you know, like in Hollywood Hills, the you know, the streets, well, San Francisco's like this too. But the streets are like this, and you see people actually have chalks for the back of their cars. I would think that it would be really tough on the parking brake. So what's a wah? Oh, wah? A wah, so... Uh, well, let me see. I can. I have to turn on my speaker. Hold on a second. Give me a second. I'll show you. We've talked about this before. I'll. I'll even show you the new, the new wah that I have. I have to. Uh, see, I got two computers now because I got a new computer and I'm still kind of migrating things over. Um, let's see. Oh, no, I want to keep that. Just need to add a, an amp in here. Sure. On this speaker, and then to make sure everything's plugged in. All right. Oh, I need a guitar too. Mm. Let's see. I'll get the. I'll use the cheap Squire because it's good for funk. But a wah wah pedal. Also call it cry to call it cry baby. It's just a, a tone. It's kind of like messing with the tone knob on your guitar a little bit. See if I can get the signal. Uh, something's okay. I'm getting signal there. But I'm not getting signal here, so I may have to. Oh, I see. I accidentally quit this. Let me open this back up. I need to get oh, before I turn on the. Speakers, I've got one eight signal going. Okay. Oh, it's weird. It's not getting an output. Why is it not working on the output? Let me see. Okay. Well, hold on. Sorry. User error somewhere along. Again, if it pops, we'll know I did something right. Nope. No pop. Oh, you know what? Did I go? No. Oh, 
you know what? I probably crawl, plug these back in the wrong way. No, that's right. No, because I'm getting signal into my that. Hmm? Yep, I'm getting signal there. I'm getting signal there, but I'm not getting signal in the logic, which is weird. All right, let's reboot. But Jimi Hendrix used the Wah. Like Wahs were developed kind of in the mid '60s. Um, it was actually invented by a trumpet player, I think, and it was kind of a way of getting that uh, the mute. The you know they would use the plunger, or, yeah, for the trumpet to kind of get that wah 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 sound. They realized that they could do it by creating a filter that would your pedal would control what frequency was being boosted. So. Do a little research on it as well, but that's how you spell it, wah-wah pedal. Come on. Wake up! Okay, I'm gonna, I have to work later, so i got to get this working anyway. Gotta wake up. So, um, oh, everybody take a sip. I changed guitars. It's one of our rules, right? What's a song by George Harrison? Well, you haven't learned anything yet. I can't, well, I can't get my computer playing. So weird. Still, still trying to say I hear it popping now, so it's probably going to work. Um, uh, still trying to kind of get everything migrated over. Some things are not working um, in in the uh, you know some of the software is not doing what it's supposed to be doing, and so that's kind of frustrating. Well, you know, it's all really only using, uh, oops, uh, only using this computer for my studio. Uh, okay. Again, no output. Well, we'll see once it gets going. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, um, I've just got a basic guitar sound up, very, very clean. Turn on the walk. It's a very bright walk. But if I turn both the volume at the same time, I can just. It's like a. It's a very unique sound that you really can't get from any other wah. And then, like I said, it's also, this is the vintage. It's actually, it's a really good sounding volume pedal in my opinion. So I would probably, if I were to use this, I would probably really pull off the toll. Trouble on it. Oh, get the bottom one again. Okay. Print. 
Prince, that kind of thing. So Prince used it a lot. There are a lot of uh, great um, guitar players that used wah. So that's what a wah wah is, and that's the that's the Mutron one, the vintage one. So I'm stoked to have it. I got that, and then <laughs> and then the kids got me birthday greetings um, from. Uh, uh, so they got me birthday greetings from Norm and um, and Cliff from Cheers. So I got videos from them of them wishing me happy birthday. <laughs> it was like the coolest thing. Because you know me, I'm a huge Cheers fan. And they were like, oh, we tried to get Ted Danson, but he he didn't do it. He wasn't doing it. And I'm like, yeah, no, he's he actually, well, I mean, it's funny because uh, uh, John Ratzenberg, Ratzenberger is one of the most He's one of the highest grossing actors in America, like number seven or something like that, because he's in every Toy Story movie. So even though you never see him, he's, you know, in all of these um, uh, Toy Story movies. So he's grossed a lot. Um, okay, sorry. Um, So, um, so that was, that was hilarious. I, you know, so I've got a video, uh, you know, of, <laughs> it was you know, like one minute long, right? The kids, you know, you, they get paid to do that. It's hilarious. So I've got to get going because I've got some work to do. I've got a friend coming over here in, in one hour. So I've got to be ready to go when he gets here. So, um, uh, so hopefully you learn what, oh, Joe, you didn't need to release or do that. Hey, Thirsty Fox, pretty much all the Pixar's. Yeah, yeah, pretty much all of them. And so those things, hugely grossing. So when they add up, like, the movies of the actors, and when you look at the top grossing actors and actresses, um, I think number one is, um, uh, what's his name? Shoot. Um, he does, he's a black actor that does the... Um, Capital One commercials, right? Was it Capital One? Uh, Samuel Samuel L. Jackson, right? Because he's like in so many movies, uh, blockbusters. It's like you may not be a great actor, but if you're in all the blockbusters, you're going to be one of the largest grossing actors, right? Please text the chord charts over in Discord for me. Oh, I need to I need to add that one. Sorry. The major seven. Where, where's Discord? I closed it. Uh, Discord, where are you? There you are. It's going to beep now that I... I can turn this off. But. All right. Tom's PDFs, right? Here. Shoot, you already did it. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> but it's the... Yeah. God bless you, Holly. You are so good. So let me see what it looks like. Probably better than mine. Yeah, that's great, Holly. That's exactly what I wanted. And dang it, just add that last chord in there. Do you still have the? Just do you still have the la the, the the document, or did you delete it? So there's that one last chord. Oh shoot, she <laughs> did you just fix it already? Did you already fix it? Should I delete all those old ones? Can you delete your, what did you, I just saw just as I was, you already did it. That's funny. You already did it. You're so fast. Oh, wait a minute, that's, why is it so much, what's this? Why is it so much smaller of a file? Oh, that, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you turned it into a PDF, I see what you did, okay. That's the chord chart, yeah. Okay, I'm like, why is that so much smaller? Uh, yeah, people prefer PDF, I'm sure. All right, now. So thank you, Tom. You're welcome, Sam. Anyway, I will... I will um, 
I'm just trying to catch up on all this, the, the chat here. Um, so hopefully next Monday I'll have a song. You know, I may stop doing this for a little while. You know, the, 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 uh, the songs and we may go back to less and learn about other things, scales or something. I don't know. Um, I may do my talk on the modes again. That's, you know, again, something I'm really interested in. And, you know, if you didn't understand it before, maybe you'll understand it this time. You know, you just never know. Every time I teach it, I probably say something different and that it makes more sense. Um, but, um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do next week. And I may have to take some time off. If I keep being as busy as I am, I feel like I'm not giving you my best if I just kind of show up here ill-prepared. So it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, clearly, during COVID, I had a little bit more time, um, especially when we were doing, like, the bluegrass stuff. I was writing entire songs during the week. Um, but, again, but, again, it was because I was working on something, too, not just, not just you guys. So, anyway, thank you so much for being here with me. I will see you, uh, hopefully, Lord willing, in a week and next Monday. Um, and I'll try to be on time. I was a little late today. I apologize. But that's because I was just putting this together because I didn't decide on this until 8.30. <laughs> so it took me, literally, I did it in 40 minutes. So um, anyway, that's it. I talked talk to you guys all later. I appreciate you. Bye-bye.